Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for another edition of Inside the Zone on this blustery Monday afternoon. President's Day, but we don't get the day off. Hopefully you did. No, we don't. Uh, but we are here to talk Comets Hockey, which is like, you know, getting paid to do something fun. Yeah. Uh, Blake Sebring, Glenn Marini here to talk Comets Hockey. And the Comets, uh, you know, you look outside today, they have to be shuddering. Yeah. Because they spent this past week in Florida with three games, uh, winning two of three, including Friday and Saturday at Orlando. Blake, when you take a look at this road trip, uh, you knew Florida was going to be a tough challenge, especially at their place on Wednesday night. Uh, but two wins against Orlando. What do you take away from this road trip for the Comets? Uh, that they were this close for going three for three. In fact, they felt they should have gone three for three. Uh, Florida had a bunch of guys out with the flu. They had some call-ups just like the Comets did. They felt like they had the majority of the scoring chances. They just overpassed and tried to get too cute. And they felt like they should have won that game. The goaltending situation, when you look at the stat sheets, uh, is the most interesting thing to me this week <laughs> because not that Roman Wolf playing well is odd. No. Uh, but the fact that he got so much run, he played in both games uh, Friday and Saturday. What do you make of that? And uh, where is Pat Nagel at right now? Because he still played well on, on sure. Wednesday as well. No, they're fine. I mean, um, you know, Pat has been trying to knock the rust off because he had the long call up to Grand Rapids where he didn't get to play much. So he's trying to get back in. And, and really, Roman played so well in the first period on Friday night, and he just kind of carried that momentum over to Saturday. And it's like, why not leave him in there? But now the thing of it was, too, he had uh, 94 shots against, I think it was. He didn't have 94 shots against. They, the, there's some dispute on how many shots he had against because it was like pinball scores racking it up. I was going to say, that's a lot he was, he was of getting, shots in two He days. was getting some bonuses there. They think maybe that the, the Solar Bears were counting block shots by the defensemen, too. And, hmm. yeah, I mean, anything he got a glove on, he got a shot. I was going to say, you know. it's not like he's going to argue. No, huh? I mean, his, his save percentage went from 908 to 919 or 917 in two games. I mean, that's remarkable. But that belies something that I think uh, is interesting to Comets fans because it seems like they, for most years, they have had two goalies. Yes. And a lot of teams don't even have the luxury of having one guy. Uh, when you had Boucher, you had a number of bat Ryder, you had a number of guys you knew could step in and do the job. Yeah, Tim Hahn had a great year. Tim Hahn year. had a great year. Um, so what does it mean that they have a guy like Roman Will and a guy like Pat Nagel? Presumably they'll have Nagel for sure. the length of the season right now, although you never uh, know. But that would It's be, only Monday. <laughs> that would be my assumption. We'll talk about Silaski getting called up again. Um, but... He had to go get his car, you know. Yeah. What does it mean to have two guys that you can rely on like that? Well, it means you don't panic is, is what it means. Is Like, I mean, if you look around the league, I mean, Kevin St. Pierre is like, I think he's 40-something, and he's gotten like six or seven emergency goaltender contracts. Larkin Saul Frank yep. has had seven or eight. You know, I mean, you panic in case your one guy gets hurt, but they don't have to worry about that as much since they have two really good goalies. And, and Lake Erie really has taken care of them with the goaltending situation that way, too. Brett Perlini, fantastic stretch right now. I've got him down for seven goals in the last nine games. What's really flipped the switch for him, and how has he been able to step up his game and be such an important part of what the Comets are doing right now and also hopefully going forward? Well, we talked about Paul Crowder coming back, making allowing Matthew Pistilli to go back to wing. Well, we didn't talk about Brett Perlini going back to the wing where he can just be a shooter. I mean, and not just a shooter, but, I mean, he can really take advantage of that. And that's part of the reason he's gotten hot is he's got those two. Well, and I don't mean this in any disrespect to Brett, but if you got a line with Pastilli and Crowder, you're going to be focusing on them mm -hmm. defensively. And then and Brett just goes to the net and bang. You know, he's, he's done a great job at that. Sean Sidlowski, I, I kind of mentioned it a second ago, called back up after Saturday's game. So what does it mean to have Sidlowski back up in the AHL? And also tell the story about his car. All right. So Sean, when he got called up the first time, drove to uh, Lake Erie. Then he got called back to the Comets. His car, he flew down to Orlando, so his car was still in Cleveland. And I'm like, Gary, how's he going to get his car? He goes, it'll all work out. Hmm. And then after the game, he gets sent back to Lake Erie, who were actually in Milwaukee. And I don't know if he got there in time or not because he didn't play yesterday for uh, Lake Erie in Milwaukee. I'm guessing he probably didn't, or he had to be exhausted after just flying in, flying out all over the place. So his car is, he'll be able to reunite with his car. If he gets sent back, he can bring it back. The, the, the question is, is it worth it? What kind of car does he I have? don't know. I don't I mean, know. This is the insider stuff that I know. we need. I'm telling you. Failing the yeah. comments. He's probably going to get a oil change over there for, you know, no problem. Why not? You know. My question is, 
uh, does, as a media guy, and you can relate to this, does he get mileage when he drives <laughs> over there? Does he, like, turn in a mileage? Yeah, actually, like, they do. They do, do get they really? travel money, yes. That, so when he drives over there, they pay for his gas and pay for all his car stuff? Yeah, along with his hotel and everything else, too. That's not a bad deal. No. Um, talking about things that are not related to expense reports, um, the Comets do have hey, You don't know what my expense reports look like. My, they could be anything I did there. mine on Sunday, and uh, <laughs> if there aren't some questions raised, then... I've uh, filled it out pretty well. Uh, there should be. Um, anyway, when you take a look at uh, the homestand starting, seven yeah. in a row at home. Um, longest since an eight-game road st uh, homestand since 97-98, so kind of unprecedented. And they did not uh, do well on that homestand either. They went two and six well, in 97-98, in which was a really good team too. You what, know. what does it mean to have a homestand at this point in the season specifically to be playing this many games at home consecutively? Well, guys will talk about distractions being more at home. You get more ticket requests. You get more people wanting your time. They want autographs and that stuff, which they don't mind. But when you get it all added in together, it's just a little, you know, you, get, you do a lot more pregame skates in the mornings than you do on the road because a lot of times ice isn't available on the road. I mean, it's just you got to really fight to maintain your routine at home more than you do on the road. Um, you, you, you got more obligations at home than you do on the road, essentially. Well, how important is it for the Comets to really make hay with oh. these seven games? Because, yes, Toledo is about they're, – they're six points back right now, but they played four less games. So this is a real opportunity to create some real distance as far as the standings go when games are all tallied up. By Especially the Wednesday's game. Wednesday's game is just absolutely huge because you could really separate from the walleye a little bit. And they're going to make up all the four games at hand by March 11th. Uh, so it's like three weeks. You know, and if, if they're struggling right now, too, they lost three in a row, and then they won uh, uh, Saturday and they lost again Sunday. You know, so they're struggling a little bit. you got to keep them there. you got to keep them down. And it's already shown how big home ice advantage is going to be in this series between these two teams. Mm -hmm. So you really got to keep them down. And then you got to put these other teams away. Uh, you've got two games with Indy. You've got two games with Gwinnett. You've got Evansville. You've got Kalamazoo. You need to reestablish home dominance. They've won three in a row. If you, could, if you could sweep this seven, then you're flying. I mean, you're just flying, and the, the regular season's over, essentially, because you're going to win the division. You're going to have home ice. And then you can really even narrow in, focus in on the conference uh, home ice advantage and maybe even the league home ice advantage, although Redding's got a really easy schedule coming up. And they're not too bad either. No, they're really good right now. Yeah, and, and as far as, you know, the North Division, I mean, it is – I know Cincinnati's kind of lurking there, but really, realistically, they played 48 games, too. So it's not like they can make up a whole ton of ground right. while uh, other teams are sitting out. Well, the other thing is, too, is you might be seeing some of these teams in the first round. You could see Indy or Cincinnati in the first round. So you really want to establish some dominance now, not give them much hope. You know? and just figure things out more. Essentially. Exactly. When you take a look at a seven-game homestand, do you approach it game by game, or do you look oh, yeah. at it? Or, no, 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 no. Or does Gary look at it as like an entire body? <laughs> Gary of looks work? at it by practice by practice. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't look past the game anywhere. I mean, um, you know, you, we, after the games, we, you've been in there a couple times. We'll ask him, "Well, what do you think about tomorrow night's game?" Haven't even looked at it yet. You know, I mean, it's like you just played a last place team. You got first place tomorrow, and you haven't looked at it yet. I was worried about this game, and it works for him. What, what is really amazing to me about these last 10, 12 games, the record has been about 500, but the effort's still been there, which is pretty remarkable when you think about who else has been missing out of the mm -hmm. lineup. I mean, that's all you can ask for is the, the consistent effort. And they've given up 21 goals against in the last 10 games. I'd take that any time of the year. And then to do it right now where you're miss, you've been missing Crowder and Schrock and Leach and Martin and Sidlowski and... Tam's still not back. And, you know, look Fye. at all, all the – oh, Fi, yeah. All the guys that have been out, that's pretty stinking remarkable to be able to do that. Yeah, it's been impressive. But uh, my final question for you is we always talk about the first period of the first game of the week. I don't know if it has more significance because it will be the first period of a seven-game homestand. Oh, I got this And one it's nailed. against Toledo. Yep. But I want to know what you think. I want to see a 0-0 game after the first period Wednesday night with Toledo because Toledo is 28-0 when they score four goals a game. When the Comets get in trouble against Toledo, we've talked about it all year long. They try to get into a skating contest with them, and they can't do it. Toledo's faster. Comets are bigger. They got to hit. They got to play defense first. They cannot get into a track meet with the walleye. That's when they lose. They just can't. And well, I'd love to see a Comets go first too, because Comets, 
by the numbers, 22-5-2 and two when scoring the first goal. It's not surprising that they no. have a massively winning record when they score first. It makes sense, but 22-5-2 and two is nothing to sneeze at. But I still, I, I, you got to play Toledo the right way. And too often, look at the last game. They had to come back by two goals down to win, score three in the third and win. They finally stopped playing racehorse and started grinding it out. And they, they forced them, you know, to come through the trap and, and they, they forecheck like crazy. It's like you got to play the right way to beat Toledo or you're playing into their hand. All right. Definitely a big week for Common Sense. Big next couple of weeks as the homestand begins on Wednesday. A date with Toledo at the Coliseum. I know you'll be there. We'll be there as well to cover it all. And we'll talk about it next Monday on Inside the Zone. He's Blake. I'm Glenn. And we'll see you then. Stay warm.